Hi, my name is Ryan Lane, and welcome to my review channel. So for today's movie, I will be reviewing Nate and Gigi, directed by Nick Ham and starring Charlie Rowe, Marcia Hardin, and Jim Belushi. Anyway, so this film tells the story of Nate, a uh, young man who has got a lot to live for. You know, he's having Fourth of July din uh, dinner with his family. He's, you know, talking to a pretty girl. He likes jumping off of cliffs. You know, he's got an active life. Told it, nothing's going to happen to him until it does. Anyway, said Wari jumps into, gives him meningitis, and renders him a quadriplegic. Anyway, so the family, you know, understandably has to take some measures to make him, to help take care of him, and one day when he straight up tries to commit suicide via drowning, they decide, yeah, maybe we should try and get him a service animal. And what service animal, you might ask? Why, a capuchin monkey, of course, because it makes too much sense. Anyway. So, yeah, so they get the capuchin monkey, you know, it's like they train him, there's some conflict along the way, yeah, 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 anyway. This, mm, no, this film isn't very good. I mean, I will say this, uh, a few things I like, like the cinematography, I do like it, it helps draw you into Nate and Gigi's perspective, like when Nate is, you know, going through the initial stages of meningitis and, you know, is stuck on the floor with a nasty headache, like, okay, I like, I like, again, if the film uses nice handheld camera to dry into his perspective, it's like, okay, I like that. Or when uh, the the Gigi monkey is being rescued from a uh, neglectful condition, it's like, okay, that's good too, that's good too. Also, the cast, I mean, ah, they do their best. I mean, they do get some funny interactions, like at one point, you know, at said 4th of July dinner, you know, Nate and some of his other friends are like, hey, we're going to go out for, uh, go out on the boat on the lake. And at one point, you know, there's some squabbling along among the siblings. And at one point, the youngest sibling wants to come and to which all four of the older siblings go and you said, no, I was like, OK, all right, that was funny. But, I mean, the thing, though, is the cast is they handle this material way too seriously and their characters are so two-dimensional, it kind of renders the film almost unintentionally hilarious at times. And also, I guess also I should note one of the big issues, the monkey itself. I, the monkey's cute. I'll give it that. But, well, here's the thing. The whole premise of the movie is that capuchin monkeys are great uh, service animals. It's like... But here's the thing, though. While the film does use a capuchin monkey for uh, a, a real-life capuchin monkey for a lot of scenes, it uses a CGI double for it, and it is not convincing. And it uses it the said double whenever it, you know, the monkey is required to do actual service animal stuff. So it kind of defeats its own premise. It's like it wants to say, hey, you know, you can use a capuchin monkey as a service animal to help you out, grab cereal from the shelves and make, you know, uh, public and make uh, product placement jokes. You can do that, but you kind of need a CGI double to complete that. It's like it sort of defeats its own premise that way. Also, the film sets up uh, some of uh, things in the first act that never really follows through on, well on in the film. Like, for example, I, you know, there's a, it sets up the cliche of the father, you know, taking too much time away from home and spending too much time at work. It, it's cliche, but I mean, it's workable, but, but the film doesn't really go anywhere with it. The closest it goes anywhere with it is at one point when the father comes home and, you know, the mess has been made after the dog chased the monkey around the house. And, uh, you know, they have, you know, the wife and the father, you know, they have a big fight about it. You know, she's like, and it's such a cliche. It's like, do you know how hard I work to pay for that kid's house, trainer, and nurse? And she's like, yeah, well, you don't actually help him. You don't make sure he, he's turned over at night and stuff. It's, it's just so cliched. And the film doesn't go anywhere after that. Just, the conflict just magically goes away between them. Like... And that can kind of be said for a lot of other things, too, about the movie. Like, remember that dog I mentioned earlier? Like, there's a whole thing where it's like the dog doesn't like the monkey. And, it, you know, at one point it escapes from the caged-in area and tries to straight 
to get the monkey, but then like two scenes later, the grandmother just takes the dog, tells him to sit in front of the cage, and the conflict is just between the dog and the monkey is just magically resolved. It's like, really? I mean, and also the thing though with the monkey itself, the monkey is just too easy of a solution. Like at one point, the father's like, you think that Capuncha monkey's gonna be a silver bullet to help uh, our son Nate out of his woes, and it kind of is. Like, literally, from the moment Nate sees the monkey, he is just smiles from both ends. Uh, and bear in mind, this occurred just a scene after he tried to commit said suicide. He went from, I'm sad and I want to kill myself, to, hey, a monkey! It's like, but, but, uh, and throughout the film, it's just such a cliche, like, every, like, this monkey could cure cancer, I think, because at one point, you know, uh, Nate, you know, he uh, does a demonstration in front of these scientists to show the progress he's making as a quadriplegic, and at one point, you know, the scientist asks, like, what's your, like, how... How have you been? And to which Nate says, oh yeah, Gigi's been great. She's helped me through all my problems. Like, it's it's like, it's just, ah. Uh, uh, and, and so this is all b before the midway point of the second act. By the midway point of the second act, it feels like all the conflict that could be resolved is resolved. It feel, the second act has nowhere to go. But then the film is like, mm, we still need more runtime. I got an idea. Let's add in a stand-in for PETA to add some conflict. It's like this sort of animal activist organization that's all that literally hates, you know, the use of animals by humans. And the organization is, I kid you not, its acronym is AFAP. For those of you who understand that joke, good. For those who don't, eh, well, I can't explain the joke. Otherwise, I'll get demonetized. But yeah, it's like, did they bring in a Family Guy writer for that joke? It's like, ugh. And like, the lady who leads this organization is such a cliche of a, of a Pia person. It's like, really? And and so they decide to make uh, the son's life, Nate's life harder. And they literally take things to the full-on capital where he testifies. And all while I'm watching this, I'm thinking, can you just get a dog? Or literally a human being to care, help care for your son and do all the things he needs done. Because you might be thinking, oh, what if they're poor and, you know, they got, you know, the service monkey on a grant. It's like, no, these people are loaded. They have a lot of money. They have a big, at one point they had two houses and they sold one house. But they seem to be doing otherwise financially well. Couldn't they just buy a, a dog for a service dog or get another human being to help them. I mean, this kid has like a little thing to carry him from bed to the shower. They have a full, uh, a full time nurse helping him out. Okay, maybe not full time, but you get the idea. The point is these guys are loaded. They don't need to go with the monkey. It's just, uh, yeah. And so with all that in mind, uh, Gigi and Nate, despite how, you know, the cast doing their best, it's Gigi and Nate just is a stupid premise of a movie to, that is cliched and unintentionally hilarious. And with all that in mind, I will be giving the film one and a half out of five stars. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. If you like this review and would like to see more like it, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And for today's comment section prompt of the day, did you like Gigi and Nate? Why or why not?